remember there was Kerot, I think you had your hands up, and um, anyone else also can, can continue. So we can start, if you guys are ready. Uh, we are ready, but uh, my partner is uh, going to join in a minute. Can we wait? Okay. We'll yeah. Yeah. Someone uh, take our place yeah. and we will continue. Yeah. And, and maybe Rudolf, then you want to continue? Because we stopped you earlier. Okay, Abiba, please give me some minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Abiba. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can, can I restart at the beginning or? Yeah. Uh, no, I think let, let's again, you know, nobody will, is going to listen to you now when you present if you are making it long. So make it, yes, your slide were good. So you can continue, but don't like ensure that how long do you need? And then try to keep that. So how long do you need? So set a um, time and then try to keep it because it's in, like for me now, like in week 11 and 12, what I'm going to, I didn't force it earlier, but I want to make sure that I'm not going to say time for you, but you, you may, you time yourself and then you try to finish on that time. So is uh, 15 minutes okay for you? How many? 15, one, five. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think okay. it's good for me. So, and and ne almost always focus on your results instead of just any other thing like because okay. what you so, do is more important than what you have understood so yeah go on so okay if it is like that i will i will just present my my result and uh, give a what uh, uh like a uh, comment it yeah. and uh okay yeah. you, you choose whatever to do like i will just be like you know it's a very ample time 15 minutes so as long as you are, you can finish within that, you know, you use better, just a general guidance to everyone. Almost always just be in, get hurry in the introductions and focus on the methodologies and actually what you do. Show mostly what you do that more than what you understand. So yeah, go for it. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I will share my screen. Hello. Can you see my yeah, screen? We can see your screen, yes. Okay, good. So, in general, when it comes to image generation, I use stability AI, stable diffusion, with a replicate to generate some images or using the the asset uh, suggestion and for that part uh, I didn't provide any 
any images here that are completely shown feature in the post as we have the other images are generated. So I generated uh, four images. Yeah. So after after generating my image, then to come to the composition of the images. So to do the composition of the images, what I did is to train yellow model version five, and to do that, uh, I use a sample of uh, archived data. And in my case, I use uh, 20 images. And what I did first is to to annotate my each of the each of the images. And for each images, I use the uh, the class logo, uh, element, a test element, background images, a call to call to action button, and uh, I. I notate each of them. So after I notate my images, then I save it and I export uh, uh, I, I export the data, the annotated data in a format in a yellow format. Okay. So this is basically the distribution of the classes. <laughs> so after this. Uh, I train the simple one, and uh, I train that uh, on within uh, three epochs. Because I was uh, in uh, my local machine, I, I just wanted to, to show the process. And uh, for this one, uh, the result was in this uh, folder. And after, uh, the result from the first batch was this, as you can see here. Is uh, the result I get. So, after this training, I use now the four images that I generated using the prompt, and now test my uh, yellow, my yellow uh, version five model that I, I built earlier. So, uh, when I build that, uh, this is the result I, I, I have. It just com to combine the images. Uh, and after this one, uh, I did an another one that I, I was showing earlier. This one is more, uh, is more relevant for our, our task. So these images, uh, uh, it doesn't know, the model doesn't know this image at all. So this is the background, this is the uh, a test representation, this it is uh, uh, the, the logo, basically. So after turning this one, it just put them together. But what was not, uh, what this was not my expectation. My expectation was that it learned how to, to put all of them together so that I can have one images. So you just put them side by side. Um, so in general, this is what I did. And I have, uh, uh, these are the, the loss of the, of the training that I, I did. The, the training was not good because uh, it was a shallow uh, model that I did, as you can see. <clears throat> uh, for the, for the boss, the, the loss was just zero for here. Uh, it decreased uh, during the the training, and uh, yeah. So uh, this is what I did during this uh, this project, and uh, I learned how to detect an object from an image, how to generate image from the test, uh, how to annotate image data set and how to train machine learnings such as the yellow five. So for the for for the worker uh, I think to increase the size of the data annotation and train on a new annotation data set and also figure out how to how to use a computer vision 
CV to to more com to more combining uh, the, the 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 images that are generated so that it can very uh, look like a, a real a real image that I, uh, that I have as a target. So thank you, and uh, I'm I'm ready and waiting for your critical feedback. It will really help me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, Rudolf. I I think you took also very good time. So that's really good timing. You know, you had more time, but you really finished and said most of the things you want. So that's the type of presentation that makes people happier when you when you are saying what you want, but in a you know very uh, summarized and and good detail way. So I think that means it it gives you time for feedback. So the one part I would say is that was the labeling very hard? Why didn't you take more labels? And second part is, it seems that your model didn't learn. Is that because then you didn't have time to actually start training for more? Because you had also um, you know, a GPU to, to actually use. And it seems you used only the local part. What was, what was the problem? Yeah, OK, thank you. Uh, for the living part, uh, yes. Uh, for for me, it, it was taking time, so uh, I didn't want to focus to to focus on that part and miss the other other part. That's why I just decided to to label a sample and to at the end at, at the end uh, go through the uh, the flow the flow and. Uh, after, if I have time, I can come back uh, and label more. So this is what uh, I, th that is the reason why I chose a 20 for the label, label part. Yeah. yeah. Now, the reason why I didn't go for the, G the GPU, it is because, uh, f f first of all, for the GPU, uh, in a... In my case, I was not, I was not able to connect my, uh, my VS, uh, my VS code to the GPU correctly. So, setting this one was a, uh, was taking time also. And the second thing, I said, okay, if I can try a sample on local machine and go further, why not? So those are the reasons why I didn't go again to the uh to the gpu and try more and okay. yeah fair reasonable i mean i think yeah, instead of sometimes taking the shortcut just to get the result is good um yeah okay i think overall i think the steps are correct it's just the result seems of course yeah it needs some work um but yeah. the steps that are taken seems to be also in in line with yeah what is expected yeah thank you Yabeba. okay thanks uh rudolph and uh, next carrot okay Good afternoon, yeah. uh, again just maybe just you know of course i didn't apply that one before just out of pure so is 15 minutes good for you guys or how yeah, much do you need more than way more than enough okay yeah. then yeah okay so good afternoon everyone uh, so me and my partner uh abil will be presenting so abil could you share the slides that we have prepared for the presentation abil your mic is on mute yeah. Yes, uh, I just told them. Yeah. Okay. So Abel is going to give us an intro, uh, and I'm going to take over, and he's going on a uh, uh, finish up. So thank you. Enjoy. All right. Thank you, Kerut. So uh, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of uh, what our goal is and our, how we approach it. So 
the main focus is using a machine learning solution that we can translate uh, an art concept to a visually complex storyboard. So we will use, we will leverage NLP, uh, computer vision, ML, and also uh, image generation, which kind of aligns with our input uh, concepts. So uh, how we approached it is basically depending on uh, the many factors that are at play here. We identified that uh, the generated image shall be accurate and more appealing, and uh, we shall be working more on that. And as well, uh, we shall look for a, an API that we can kind of uh, input the right uh, context and the right instructions so that we can get the exact uh, output that we want, and also uh, trying to create some sort of uh, exchange strategy so that we can. Uh, create the CTR and the taglines and everything. So that was the approach. So uh, we have uh, progressed, uh, as we, as I said, uh, focusing on these uh, aspects. And Carol is going to be giving you more about on the uh, first steps, meaning the image generation and also the uh, prompt engine and everything. So uh, you can go ahead and present your thought, Carol. Okay, thank you. Uh, can we go to the second slide? Yeah, that's the right one. Yeah. So uh, the first thing we did, we did is uh, we started with the EDA. So we did the EDA because we wanted to know what kind of ads are preferred by the user. So uh, thankfully, the uh, data we had, uh, especially the have the the performance uh, data, has uh, the CTR and ER, the engagement rate and the click through rate data. So we used this data in order to get, distinguish the uh, already the given advertisements and used it for two reasons, two main reasons. So the first reason is we used it to train our data and we wanted to use the best uh, kind of data we, have, we can have. So we used it for that. Uh, and for the second thing is we wanted to make the composition step a bit, at least uh, some uh, semi-automatic uh, uh, kind of things because because the code the starter code we had it was already uh, manual because already it was set the positions and we wanted to make it some uh, at least a semi uh, automatic step. So what we did is uh, we took the top the top uh, ranking ads 100 from uh, the CTR and 100 from the ER and we uh, got uh, intersection then intersection point and we found around 44 arts so we use this for 44 arts for the steps that i talked in and abiel is going to uh, talk about how we use them in the training uh, part so uh, interesting thing is the is what we found when we as were uh, uh, playing around with the eda was that the highest uh, ctr was uh, actually achieved by a advertisement of a, I think a streaming de device so uh, for those of you who don't know what CTR is it's a, it's a click-through rate so how many people are going to see this ad and uh, actually click on the you know the interactive element when prompted so the streaming element that's the yeah, streaming I, I think I, just correction that's not the case yeah. ER is that one engagement rate is that one and CTR is on the final screen on the end screen those people who click. Yeah, oh, uh, on the final screen, I think there is a prompt saying that uh, click here to play now or yes. click here. Uh, I, I mean, you say it on the interaction. So be, the, what defines ER and CTR is just one is on the end screen and the other one is on the beginning screen. Just just clarify that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I meant the when prompted to click, how many people are going to click. That's what I mean. So I think we are on the same frame, yeah. uh, place. So, yeah. Uh, so that was what we are looking for, and uh, it, it was interacting and an interesting thing to uh, thing to look at. So, uh, can we go to the next slide, Abit? Yeah. So uh, after that, we went ahead and uh, started with the image generation, and when we were trying to use the to generate image, uh, we tried a lot of m models and. The one that we were uh, happy with, with the, with the result, was uh, uh, the focus uh, 
V seven uh, the focus one, the focus model, and we use that one because uh, for two reasons. The first one is it has a lot of advanced features, and the second one is it has it provides API, so we could use it from our local ma machine. So, uh, but uh, of course, when we were trying to use uh, focus and other models, the first uh, I think challenge that we were faced with is the prompt because when we already give the context that were provided to us to join the arts, it doesn't uh, create a good uh, picture. So what we did is we used uh, prompt engineering. Uh, so I think we can go to the next slide, Abil. Yeah, so we used prompt engineering in order to enhance the, this thing. So we use GPT-5 Turbo to, auto, to automate the prompt generation and help us generate a better image. So as you can see, when we uh, try to prompt it uh, you, using the context, uh, we can see the context on the next slide. So this is the context that was provided to us. So a play button slides that to resemble uh, a Lego brick and so on. So when we use this image, this is what we get. But this was not exactly what we are looking for. So we had to go back to the chat in GPT or the OpenAI uh, model and uh, provide it. And you know, like Eric, you are uh, here to assist me with prompting this context and gi giving it the context and uh, gi getting back the results. So the result is on the next slide. So this was what we got uh, back. So. Uh, on the previous two slides, uh, it talks about how long prompts are more specific, give, give us a more specific and a more detailed picture, while the a shorter or the given context did, did not do, do that. So this was what we got uh, on the next or when we uh, feed the prompt that was given to us by uh, GPT to the model. So as you can see, this we can use this one because it's 2D and it's it can be uh, transformed into a clickable pattern. So yeah, so this is what I did. Uh, uh, from now on, I think I will is going to get to give the rest. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carol. So uh, we kind of believe that we have generated a at least some several amount of uh, image uh, using these uh, modifications. So uh, we then go ahead and uh, kind of created uh, our own uh, YOLO 7 custom training or YOLO, or YOLO 7 model. So to do that, uh, we created, uh, I think we will show, show some codes here. So uh, yes, so we uh, kind of created uh, our classes, which is which was provided to us uh, on the uh, training document uh, to use these uh, assets uh, when identifying uh, objects within our frames. So uh, after doing that, we uh, created the number of classes and we uh, created a training value datasets. And uh, for that, we used our own splitter. Uh, so there is an original data. And uh, after that data, we split, we split it to 18, 20, and we created our validation and our context. So uh, after doing that, uh, we were able to train our model, and uh, we were able to find a model that was identifying the uh, named object there. So after doing that, uh, basically, uh, the purpose was trying to analyze and find the uh, uh, that it that it identification within our frames within our data frames. So the basic purpose of this is basically trying to identify the generated image, and uh, we can decide on what to do next after analyzing it. So uh, as I said, uh, during the training, we used uh, the 20, uh, 30 models, uh, the 80, 20 models, and we were able to identify the pictures with it. So uh, we created a 
different sets of files uh, to kind of identify the assets with. So uh, there is an object asset. So as you can see, uh, it uh, identify what's within the within the assets, and it will give us the output. So after uh, getting the output, uh, we convert it. Uh, to, we will identify the positions uh, of uh, those frames. So as you can see, we identify where those uh, specific uh, assets are located within our frame, so or within our image. So after doing that, uh, we kind of uh, transfer it to the uh, image composer, which helps us identify uh, where which uh, assets uh, shall be positioned where. So that's the basic purpose of the composer. So after doing that, we kind of transfer that position to the storyboard, and the storyboard will create uh, frames uh, in Simon Tyler's mind. So. Uh, after doing that, as I said, uh, we identify the uh, positions of our data or our uh, assets, and we kind of uh, went on and uh, identified where we shall place them uh, based on the Milky's uh, position code. Uh, we believe uh, we shall had uh, made it a dynamic one, meaning, for example, for the, uh, let's say, for the retail alt uh, the ctr position might be uh, appropriate on some position and for let's say for a real estate ad, the ctr position might be on the other part so we were thinking of uh, the, making this uh, positioning dynamic but uh, we couldn't be able to do so during the due to the time constraint of uh, kind of creating a relationship of uh, some sort of correlation between the ctr and ER of the positions within the within the buttons or the uh, click to action buttons. So that was uh, the one thing we placed. And the other thing uh, we added was uh, background removal methods. So once we identified uh, whether this uh, specific asset is uh, a CTR or a tagline or something, uh, we were not able to uh, uh, instruct the AI not to create a background for it. So uh, we was facing serious struggles uh, uh, when uh, layering these frames upon each other because uh, they all have backgrounds and we were not able to do so. So we developed our own uh, mechanism in order to remove uh, our background. So this class is basically accepting uh, the asset or the asset for location and it will try to convert it uh, by removing the background. So after doing that, uh, as you can see, it is uh, removed, the background is removed, and we can um, put this uh, frame upon another asset so that we can create some sort of uh, sense giving uh, output. So uh, our final, final storyboard after doing it was uh, basically this, uh, and the original image was uh, Compose one. This was all. So this is a combined image. This is the output of our uh, storyboard. And uh, this was the first image. Uh, the context we used was basically this one. Uh, so uh, uh, the tag nine or it, it was not uh, generating this at all. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, we were able to count. We were able to generate the countdown and the background and also the logo and the CTA button. And after generating this, as you saw, uh, we kind of able to place upon each other by using the background remove method. And I believe with a more uh, tuning and a more uh, kind of uh, adjustment, we can reach uh, a better resize and a better uh, positioning, and it will uh, achieve its goal. So uh, this was our approach, and this was our outcome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, if I can just uh, add, okay, I will like, okay. All right, sure. So, if I could just add some, something, so the storyboard that you are looking at right here is, for example, the first picture that I will be showing on the code or on the VS code uh, has multiple, uh, has two assets. So, the countdown uh, uh, themed, uh, the Lego themed countdown and digital countdown. Uh, yeah, is another asset and the background is another asset. So this, this one is the composition. Yeah, so we didn't actually uh, generate the image as a whole. 
that we generated parties and we comp uh, we, we co compose them together as was expected in the project okay so thanks i think again you finished just only one minute late uh, so that's fine um again i think you know what what i'm trying what you're not demonstrating maybe just uh, this is much more me being very critical i know how hard this is so it's it's not that i don't understand but the in the ability what goes inside you know if you if you are overlaying two images just one after the other using cv it, it hasn't you don't demonstrate any learning now there is maybe that is it's learned something but you're not kind of bringing it out that means how will that be generated if you were just to do it by hand you know you just say like okay you know put uh, order is that you put lego on top of a background you know or you, you put the logo on, on top of that thing and then you put the some ctr on the bottom you know and you put it and that's it right? you don't need to learn anything so what what makes this thing like does it do transformation itself does it do you know like color change or does it do size comparison what does it know other than just a simple you know why do you go all the long way i mean i understand the generation component of it so that's once you finish instead of trying to do then everything else why wouldn't so again why did you do all that learning of yolo and the position and what has you know why didn't you just remove all that and say like you know i'm gonna put something on top i'm gonna put something in the bottom can it be demonstrated that it's actually doing more than that oh okay so uh i think if i understand uh, the question correctly uh, so the thing we did with yolo was try to identify whether the generated assets is uh, a ctr or a logo or something so that we can feed it to the composition uh, for the composition so that it can identify where it shall be placed so that's the thing we have done with so the you, use, you use the yolo no i mean i'm, I'm now it doesn't make sense so you crafted a prompt to generate a play something or you didn't know what you were generating it was just generated and then you identified it i mean did you identify it from the image whether it's a logo or not or did you know when you generate whether it's a leg you know it's a ctr or a background i assumed you knew already from your prompt what you're generating no. Oh, no. yes. So, uh, yes, I uh, understand the question. So basically, uh, we use these positions. For example, uh, let's say uh, when we do the background remove, uh, mostly these pictures, uh, for example, if I showed you. Yeah. So as you can see, the picture is in the middle here. So uh, mostly when the frame are generated, the pictures are up in the middle or somewhere uh, in the wrong location. So. We need the YOLO to identify uh, where the actual uh, this uh, identified object is in, where it's located, so that we can move it to the uh, location that it shall be moved to. Is it clear? It's clear. Yes. I can see. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's so, a, a, there's a, a echo. So I can understand. Yeah. Uh, this is, yeah. So we identify the position with YOLO and we move yeah. it to the uh, correct position using the the position that YOLO gave us. So we use this and we I, mean, I think I think my my I think the question is because I think uh, I think uh, we are assuming that the picture was generated as a whole uh, by giving it the whole context. But in uh, essence, the background image is generated uh, individually, and the CTR is my, the CT, the, the click through the clickable uh, button is generated individually, and everything were in the, created individually. So we used YOLO in order to find out where the optimal position is to place this. Uh, yeah, but that's what, that's what I, I'm, I'm saying that it's not demonstrated. I mean, so I think there are two stories, and two stories probably are still here. One story is that when you generate, let's imagine you are generating a CTR 
And when it's generated, you don't know where it's placed that CTR, the actual yes. object. And yes. you might use YOLO again to find out where it is. But in effect, I think that's not interesting because you know exactly, you know, you can subs you can actually, you might not do much, but in principle, just that by looking at a smooth background by, you know, CV2 can actually remove background without you, uh, without you actually identifying where it is. And you probably then can cut out everything that's smooth and still you don't need probably that much if you know, because you know exactly what you have generated, right? Or what you are generating with. And if it's a background, it's a background. There's no YOLO there. It's just, it's a background. But when you generate CTR, maybe you want to know which part of that image which is generated is a CTR component. I, I think it's less interesting. I mean, I, I see the point if you are, but it's not that critical. The, the most important part I imagine is the placement, where to place. So if you, I, I thought the first time you, you, you were using YOLO, one is for segmentation and the other one is actually to learn where things are so that then you will know based on the data that's labeled because you have segmented from existing ads, you have identified where logos are placed optimally, where you know things are placed optimally. Now, I thought that demonstration is, you know, um, not only that it's where, but also the size, right? So um, that you have learned, I thought that must be demonstrated. And that's what I'm not seeing is, does it actually do that? You know, have you demonstrated that the placement actually does take care of the size, resizes itself, or, you know, places optimally other than just with the one you specified from the map that I think Milky or something gave, is that demonstrated? Because if, if that, that's the key component, as, as, as I'm saying, in terms of composition. So is yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, does it make sense? Yeah, I understand, I understand. As, as I mentioned, that was uh, the plan that we were trying to do but uh, this whole process so uh, when we generated many images the positions was very very uh, disruptive in a way so we cannot identify for example if you want to take this specific part we were not able to identify uh, where to put them because when we remove the background and resize it this specific uh, thing that we want to showcase uh, go somewhere else and we were uh, kind of creating a rubbish or Useless. Let me ask you here. So, did yeah. you generate? No, just can you not change, please? All right, all right. This one, yeah. Yeah, this one. So, was it generated from a prompt that says generate me a logo? Uh, the prompt for this specific uh, is a whole prompt, right? Yeah. That, that just yeah. does say That's generates right. a logo, a person, a background, and all that yes this one yes yeah. so that i yeah. mean so that means you know from what you said earlier it doesn't make sense no no so this for one this is, one for this, this one, one is a general one. Exactly. this is a general you're trying to generate everything as one yeah we were experimenting as we told you we were yeah. experimenting I, I this I mean, one I, 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 i'm just and I, I understand exactly so mm -hmm. that one yes that's different so you could use the yolo yeah. there and try to re, you know cut out and then restructure that one is possible but yes. for, I think you are not presenting that. You are presenting the other part, which is you generate each piece individually, and then you're trying to compose. What I am saying okay. is that you are not demonstrating in that composition whether a simple just rule based, you know, like I'm going to put this one on top, I'm going to put that one on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, that can be as good as this one. So what is different? So sometimes you can do some anything complicated, but if it's equivalent to something simple, you haven't learned. So there needs to be demonstration that your effort in teaching your or other model to place is not demonstrated. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, or is that not, was that not your intention? You're exactly on point. Uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, so that was a goal. We were trying to identify the best place we can position 
uh, the ads and the logos uh, by learning from the data that were given to us. But as I said, in the middle, we were facing this obstacle, then we went to try to solve it and make it giving a, 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 sensible, yeah, yeah, a sensible output. So we ended up uh, creating this sensible output, but as I said, uh, in the beginning, we were not able to make this dynamic in a way that you are uh, asking us to showcase in a way. Well, that answers. as long as it's really, you know, say it, then it's fine. And I think that was what the previous, I think the, uh, in the morning, some, you know, they were using MNP to try to do that. So train just at least a simple model that does resizing and stuff. So, but that's good. Okay, good. Then um, thanks guys. I think it's also uh, shows a modularity. That's very good. Uh, then let's go to the next one. I think we are way uh, over time. So Abraham and Abraham Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, so to start over our presentation, uh, we won't be taking much time just to showcase what we have done. Uh, I'll be presenting the slide and uh, uh, a moment afterwards, uh, the other Abraham will continue with what we have done. Yep, Is it visible? Screen. Yep. Okay, uh, so uh, I won't be taking much time on uh, what the whole idea of the project is. Uh, so, uh, just to give a, a few uh, insight, a few ideas, we we wanted to uh, create a textual. Uh, we want to convert textual advertisements uh, or the concepts and assets and descriptions into visually compelling and somehow realistic storyboards. Uh, so we followed three steps. That's the image generation, the ED analysis on the given assets, the image composition in the storyboard creation. This is what we had as an initial approach. Uh, and uh, right after uh, Milky gave us a tutorial, we switched a bit uh, format because uh, we, we were able to see how uh, the whole process went, but we saw some uh, def some deficiencies in uh, the image quality and uh, as well as the prompt so we took a bit of time uh, on uh, uh, trying to rectify that so uh, what we did was we had a prompt engineering concept involved so the, the better the prompt the better the quality of the and the realism of the image so we assumed we need to work a bit, a bit more on that so we sw switched uh, our uh, tasks to prompt engineering and image quality uh, or realize uh, a more realistic image generating a real a realistic image so uh, to give a little brief on the prompt engineering we we wanted to make sure uh, that the prompt we are we are being given is uh, as much as possible concise concise uh, as well as a very descriptive and generated uh, quality image so we used open ai for uh, uh, refactoring our or re, uh, re -enha enhancing our uh, template i mean our uh, prompts so uh, we used the this uh, template and gave it to openai so as you can see the uh, we took a background such as uh, descriptive this way uh, and changed it into this uh, suitable and small uh, and concise uh, prompt so we did the same for three uh, we will be uh, the other abraham will be demonstrating uh, what we have got, I'll just be giving a, sh a short brief over of the overall uh, approach. So these are the prompts, as you can see, they are very concise and very uh, descriptive and also helped us generate a better image uh, in the end. Uh, and so uh, Abraham can continue from this. Just just out of, you know, when you say better, it helps us better, then you have to you know what is expected in, in in the listener's mind is that you're going to show us what was generated from 
just the description using the long description versus what is shown from the long description, the short description or the, the new template. If you don't do that, you basically are saying something that does that cannot be evidenced. Right. So just just out of this is yeah. because it's an important lesson for everyone. If you are saying if it does something better, you are claiming something and means you have to demonstrate it that if you were just to use the long like whatever was you know before and whenever you, and then after that there is a clear quality in a certain nature just yeah go on uh, abraham Adis. okay yeah exactly uh, i hope uh, abraham Adis has retrieved the images they they were on the instances but uh, i hope he will uh, say a few things about that so i'll leave over to him okay uh, good afternoon guys yeah. So I'm audible. Yeah, you can hear. Okay, let me just quickly share my screen and uh, show you what. I think it's coming. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we see your screen. Okay. All right, so uh, I'll try to make it quick. So uh, the, the way we approach the image generation part is that after a couple of researches, uh, we kind of got this uh, documentation that talks up about the diffusion models. And, uh, you know, before we just uh, pass our uh, prompt, we, we kind of play around with the, uh, with the models. So the first thing we did, we installed the necessary packages uh for uh, the image generation and then uh um, we just uh, with this simple script uh, we were able to generate uh, a very good qu quality image uh, th th this is just a, a sample prompt uh, that we found on the documentation as you can see the image quality is uh, very high and uh, the and the and it's relevant to the prompt that uh, uh, we found on the documents and then uh, the next thing we did is we just uh, play around with the model by just changing the different parameters like the changing the seeds and uh, also try to create a, a four different image with the same uh, prompt and then uh, you know af after a couple of experiments the image that we found based on the prompt that we found on the document was the, the image quality was nice and uh, relevant to the prompt and then we decided to go with these uh, models uh, and after that uh, the next thing we did is we uh, pass uh, uh, our prompt that we found on the json files just to create some background image and uh, um, this was the, the couple of images that was generated uh, the, that uh, the on the using the row uh, the first prompt that's not uh, improved and as you can see it here uh, oh wait this this is one of the Im no not this one i think this is a, one of the image that was generated and as well as this this one and uh you know it, it, it was it, the, the the image quality was not that much relevant to the prompt that uh, we have given it and then uh, after uh, we work on improving the prompts, we were able to generate uh, uh, this kind of image, which uh, somehow uh, improved and uh, relevant to the, the prompt we, we have given it. And uh, so uh, the next thing we did is once we get a good quality image, uh, the, once we get the good quality image uh, we uh, based on the milky's uh, starter code we updated the uh, image generator function we updated the image generator function uh, uh, using our own models so th this is what basically uh, have done uh, on the image generation part yeah yeah th okay. that's it back Thank to you uh -huh. Uh, and so to continue, uh, share again my slide, just to conclude the presentation. Is my screen visible? It's coming. It's coming, yeah. 
Okay, so uh, we try to also go over uh, a few other concepts and uh, try to see what we can uh, come up with. And so uh, we, as Abraham mentioned, we, uh, the model name was stable diffusion, and uh, we were able to generate such images from other concepts. Uh, and also, as you can see, we had a very concise and uh, uh, descriptive uh, prompt. And so uh, we were able to create such things. And as a, as an option, we as as for a final output, we thought that we could have uh, make varieties. And so we could help we could help uh, uh, the customer or client choose from a few uh, uh, generated images. Uh, but yeah, the final output was not as we uh, expected. I mean, we did not finish the whole thing uh, until the end, but uh, we were able to generate a few images. And so uh, to conclude, uh, we had we were not able to complete the whole story what this is in model training. Uh, we thought that uh, given uh, Milky's tutorial, we would have no problem in the image composition in the whole story what the model training. But uh, we had we had trouble trying to implement integrate our on uh, diffusion model uh, into that uh, trying to integrate the whole the two. Uh, the two codes, uh, and so uh, we used just the prompt engineering and tried to refine our refine our image generation. And our takeaways were uh, we we had deep uh, we tried to delve in inside uh, computer vision, deep learning, and prompt engineering for this uh, task. <laughs> yeah. So I think, that, that uh, be... yeah, but I think this is so. In part, of course, from the results perspective, it still needs to be improved um, because of like I, I think the text. I think that was most other people also were also talking that there was the issue of like text being not correct and you know so a controlled uh, generation is important that it actually generates exactly what you want instead of more. So being able to limit either through post-processing, pre-processing, or prompt uh, engineering. And now also I assume everybody understood that we, you know, on the precision ride building that you 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 did, where you, you have to actually generate prompts and you have to evaluate them. That is the essence of everything that you do in anything that when you are interacting with LLMs, whether it's text, image, or even multimodal. Now, Sora comes as a, you know, from OpenAI, as well video generation in every of them that you have to be able to control and generating prompts evaluating them ranking them at what i see as a general is that i think you all tried one week is very small that's good but there wasn't the impossible was not tried that means you could have done with the resource you have could have gone a long way to do something that is the most impossible thing um, Part. again it's not a criticism it's a it's a way of like i think you limit it only to something possible just to be done and it doesn't seem that um you know you yeah maybe brahan so i think just i would i would stop there because i think the sense that to generate so much prompts rank them test them use them from your previous and then bring them and kind of try as much, you know, do all that to get just something, you know, the computer does that. You don't do it. In principle, that can be done, right? So, and it, it would be the same. It's just the mentality you could have been, you know, I am going to generate hundreds of prompts, re-rank them, do some evaluation and put that, you know, it's kind of something that would be like impressive. Um, and that's what probably also earlier where Arnold said, you know, he doesn't expect great. That's what he, it means. It's very hard for people normally with a set without experience to try the impossible. Um, and sometimes you have to break your own limits, something that you, you think that it's not possible. Uh, but it, there is, of course, a risk of failure there as well. So, you know, it's just a balance. It is not a criticism. It's just much more. There is that path as well. It's much more that. Yeah, Brahan? Mm. Actually, uh, it, it's just an, uh, an idea what I have and what I get to learn more of out of this um, project and how we can bring it to actual reality, right? So 
what 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 I get to learn is that the, when we come to the composition of the smaller components or assets, the one main thing from an advertisement is there is a background and there is a foreground, right? And then there are elements. So what we failed to do is like to do a deeper understanding of the background image, not the smaller elements. Right, let's say if I have a button, it's a button, but that's all. If I have some interactive element, it's an element and nothing more about it. Right, what's, what's, because it's not many components, so we can dissect the image into smaller things. That's what we have done. But when we really come to composition, um, uh, earlier we've seen the present to create a regression model and then predict their positions. Meaning wise, what I get to see is like their, their generation is also their, the model finds the best place for the specific category. It's not dynamic in a way, because what I said this is, I, I, may, be, I may be wrong, you'll correct me, but what I get to learn is that if we change the background of that image, and then will the, let's say, if, if, if they're gonna place some button or the, some car, some interactive element or some something else, some element, Will it, will it be in, a, in the right place? Will it be dynamic enough, right? So it's not going to be like that. So we also needed a, a larger data set in a way that we can, let's say if I have an image and then I can, I can extract the background, let's say, and then dissect it into different uh, sections, let's say nine or 16 sections, the, the background image only, and then assess that the elements where they are placed in the image composition, what is in the, Actual background that so that when the background changes the co the place the placement of the those elements will be changed because it it's all the 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 placement of those elements is going to be determined on the background where what what do I have in my background right if there is some person uh, at some side uh, am I if there is no understanding of that it's going to be really tough to to figure out the model and to understand it so. That's one thing we get to learn, and like, was it satisfactory in a way? Yeah, it wasn't, but I believe we get to learn a lot I of think things. Let, let, let me say, it. a result must not be stated as satisfactory. I think, as I said, the smallest, it's a prototype. A prototype means to learn something that that is new. It is not about the result. Something that has not been seen, for example, in Milky's Court. You know, that's yeah, what it, people are looking for. So in a way... Something, something, Okay, something also what I get to see is that let's say if I want to, they they given us the context some it it shows that the prompts of asset suggestions. So those prompts were so dummy that I have to figure out a way that to optimize the prompts. And then what I get to learn is that if I want to generate an image, it has to be very precise. It doesn't have to be too long. It doesn't have to be too short. And also it has to be very pictographic in a way telling it exact color, composition, texture, and elements and things that I want, even if in that case it might fail to do so. Yeah, so, so um, it, it, exactly. So that's a lesson that you guys learn and that is the contribution you have, right? So that's good, one, right? And it is about you evaluate it and what works and what doesn't work, yeah. So again, what I am saying is that there are many wins from the presentation we heard. The presentation we heard have presented different approaches. Sometimes some people try to generate everything as in one go. And so what whether it's possible or not, the, the challenge is related to that. Sometimes just to decompose everything and generate one by one and try to compose um, together. And tasted different generation mechanisms, tasted different placement. In placement, I think, I don't know who's, who's group, but there was only one that I felt interesting. The, the basically the multi perceptron network just where it's trying to resize or do something so within that component there can be color selection of color you know color compatibility can come there as well as i think the one element that almost always probably that is not visible that yeah nobody has tried is you don't want to place something on top of something that means the order if an object is there you, you don't want to put on top of it if it is important. So for example, in human face, you don't want to put text. So identifying actually empty spaces by itself is the most interesting. Like that means it must not place either or either shade it if it's just not relevant or because that is key in placement, right? So a few things like color um, 
empty place or like behind it or above it what it is there and then the other element is beside it what is there like the four components like you know beside me you know what is most likely what what is there will i go for example if each item and as an object oriented or if you think of it each object is trying to select like the best place for itself using basically saying like i i am most of the time i am close to you know certain objects um you know if if a logo is saying like i'm 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 much more most of the time i prefer above but i also want to be or not together with another text okay. so, so this is kind of like a relationship with other objects things like that could improve again you have a week you you do what you can best and it's not as i said earlier it's not a criticism so but it's also i can tell you there is also another way that you could have done you could have used your previous knowledge in generating prompts that are so much and kind of rank them by based on you know evaluations and kind of do that Th those things are like connections that means your previous knowledge uh, uh, putting them together and especially when you are more than one you could you could try something impossible something that to, has a high potential of failure but you know something different that others probably won't do um because the, the stake is high again i'm not gonna criticize because you haven't done because that's that's as i i think as in our known sense that's the great component that means the good you know so what he defines as as good better and um great so i think most people have done the the better part and some people good some people better but it doesn't seem for me from just at least my honest analysis the great has not been tried and from for this week think about what a great is again um because that's a good a good challenge that arno puts um but you know start okay basile uh yeah just uh, just ask for a quick clarification when you when you say color do you mean like the pixel uh or the background image of that specific part or uh because you know the color of the whole thing yeah the just... color of the object for example the color of the asset so for example a logo is a certain color so the dominant let's imagine just now for the dominant color so just the and, dominant yeah. or something and, like eh? or or something uh, okay yeah. so normally you, you define as primary and secondary color that basically means you know you, you define them just like any other design you have a certain color sometimes more more colors you can say you can also define the primary color the, the the secondary color and then the number of colors or like the score of color that means is it a uniform or a non-uniform right that's the harmonization exactly um and but normally that the harmonization component should address these elements where to place because harmonization is another operator that somehow pushes each other such that color space in color space it's it also looks better right and then in in sharpness and in covering i mean the harmonization can represent but it can also decompose within the harmonization a number of steps where color harmonization order harmonization you know size harmonization sometimes like you don't want to play something big and small whatever it's just like some kind of you know graduality alignment so these are all harmonization and you can decompose some of that yeah, does that make sense yeah it does it does thank you okay. yeah okay great and maybe just this is me now is there anyone who can give criticism into another by criticism i mean constructive criticism that means where they saw there was a great potential but that the team hasn't tried or the individual hasn't tried it's much more of, you know a peer feedback and that way I then we would also know that you have been paying attention and analyzing other people's work other than just also thinking only your work yeah 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 hey, uh, yeah uh, i think something that we didn't do but other groups did was uh <clears throat> the the training uh, the data set to find the object locations. Uh, and I believe that can be uh, combined with the uh, composition, harmonization, and generation 
uh, sections in the one of the models uh, because the the drawback of that model was to find the a position and also the bounding box so the the the, the scaling uh, the positioning will be done by the, the the model itself so if we did that we could have um, a good harmonized composed frame so the uh, i think uh, brahan group and other group did the, the 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 learning process that that was great yeah that that can be combined with those models uh, to get the uh, uh, required uh, storyboard because everything is there the harmonization the resizing even the the background removal it has it all thank you thanks yeah yeah for the insight. Anyone else? And and I have also another question. I think Ms. Ghana and Aaron, you've done also something that I found when I looked at your report was interesting. Why didn't you present? Okay, so uh, I'm not asking to present, but I'm just no, no, not present, but okay. yeah. Yeah, why? Why not? I just we didn't do the composition part. I mean, we we just finished the labeling part, but um, but you, you put we, you know like we, that's what I'm. I don't understand sometimes. We we keep repeating. It's not about the end result only. It's I mean you probably got frustrated. I don't know how, but you had the data labeling. You probably labeled more data than maybe others. I don't know. I don't know how many. I, I don't know how many, and you have tried, and the effort was good. It's about ownership, you know. Yeah. It's and I, I was very much disappointed to to say the least that you're not even trying to present that, you know. And and and, and that's maybe by chance also I saw your work, but maybe others as well there. I mean, I I think it's somehow I don't know how to tell it. Maybe that I don't know how to tell it. Maybe just. But it's very interesting how people choose not to present in after putting a lot of effort not to fight to present it and to show it. I don't know. It's, so what was your reasoning again, just uh, to hear it? Just we were just thinking about the putting things dynamically and we didn't do the implementations. That's that's why the composition. Okay. But please just for next time is is not about getting wh where you plan to go, but some of the good things that you have done along the way. And especially like the the clustering and the grouping that was already just the analysis was already in more places and you put some effort in labeling. Um, and so it, I think it was good. So, yep. Okay. And uh, again, uh, as I'm, I think I'm pointing that group just simply because I have seen it. And there might be other people who hasn't presented, but probably has done a lot. And, you know, I don't know, just if you can hear it, just it's not about, it's about, you may think it's just about reaching something that, that was said. But sometimes it's along the process the, the good things that you have done okay so don't forget that okay wonderful i think then we can stop here and if you want um to present uh, and you want me to hear you can also just dm me and you can present as well just uh, but for now let's focus after this i think the challenge that are given to us we know everything now. We have every element. Our the knowledge is there, uh, but there, let let it be. Just you put all the effort you can to try to, you know, bring together all your lessons, all your learnings, um, in this week's project. Next week will be the project. You choose one of your project from the the past weeks, and you work on them to improve so that in your portfolio they appear as you know great, not just okay, but great. So. 
there will not be new projects next week and the last um, week of the training but just choose one and you know iterate or make it better so this will be your last new project so um, you know try as much as you can thanks guys